everybody, thank you for being here. I would like <laughs> to introduce to you a good friend of mine, Justin Wright. I think he has a lot of great things to share with you about his future in law enforcement. So, yeah. Great. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, all right. So, when people ask me why I want to become a police officer, I don't really have the exact story or reason why. As long as I've known, I've always been fascinated in law enforcement, or to be chasing down criminals, helping people in their lowest point of life, or riding around in a police car with lights and sirens on to a call. Through my life, I've always seen law enforcement helping our communities become a safer place to live in. Whether it be the time when our car broke down in the middle lane of Hampton and used their car to block traffic so we wouldn't get hit until a tow truck arrived, or reading in the news about police arresting dangerous criminals, or officers running toward gunfire and protecting those who may not even like them. Matthew 5, 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called sons of God. For my capstone, I want to learn the godly connection between law enforcement and Christianity. And through my capstone experience, I really, I've realized how fun and challenging this career will be. One thing the officer hates to have to do is take a life. It's something that they never hope to have to do, but some have no choice but to do it. Psalms 1839 says, for you have girded me with strength for battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. Taking faith in what God's word says can help officers in these hard times. There are many virtues that I learned um, that a good Christian police officer should have, but through my ride-alongs, my book reading, and my interviews, I, I learned and identified three main ones. The first one is compassion. Compassion is something that as a uh, law enforcement uh, or police officer, you have to have at least some of it. You can't live off it. I learned this one from Mr. Andrews. Mr. Andrews is a homicide detective with the Denver Police Department. He told me his job is pretty stressful. He's the one in charge of doing all the paperwork and all the investigating to make sure the suspects get locked up and the victims' families get the justice that they deserve. Um, I asked Mr. Andrews if there any way he can show compassion in his field. He said the way he can show compassion is through helping fellow uh, detectives who may be stressed out on a case or by showing compassion to the families of those of the murdered victims. I asked him if he had any cool story about showing compassion in his line of work. He said back when he was a patrol officer, he was assigned to go pick up a 75-year-old man who had a warrant for uh, making fraud checks. When he got to the house, his, the man's wife answered the door and said he wasn't there. Mr. Andrews went back to the house several times, and each time his wife said he wasn't there. Finally, he said she told Mr. Andrews that her husband had taken all their money and fled, not telling her where he went. Mr. Andrews felt like this lady needed to see compassion and God's love, since she was a Christian as well. First thing he did was help her file for a divorce. Then he started inviting her to family events with the Andrews family, since she had no family here in Denver. Uh, she became like a second grandma to Ian, and when she passed away, the Andrews family went, to the, went up to her church. Their tree was so much kindness and respect. And we're told of how much um, the one simple act of kindness led to blessing this lady's life. Mr. Andrews said it was uh, cool how he thought a little bit of compassion led to that whole lady's life being changed in only a way that God could see. I did two Rylons um, this year. The first one was the sheriff's office. I'll get to that one in a second. But my second one I did was with uh, Denver police officer Danny Fife. Mr. Andrews helped me hook up with him. Uh, I went on a Friday afternoon up to District 5. That's uh, Stapleton, Northfield, Mont Bell, and Green Valley Ranch. Overall, it was a pretty quiet Friday afternoon. Uh, we only had a silent alarm uh, at a Red Robin. It wasn't actually getting hold, held up. It was just a, a false alarm. Uh, we had a minor accident, 911 hang up, and then a car alarm that went off. So while we were waiting for the next call, uh, Officer Pfeiffer showed me this cool software program in Denver Police to use called ShotSpotter. What this program does is that the police put um, sensors up in high crime neighborhoods and if there's ever a shooting that occurs, the software immediately detects where the shooting occurred and what type of gun was used. So he was showing me an audio of a shooting a couple of days earlier in Montbello when we got a, a call of a two vehicle accident with injuries right down the street from the police station. Uh, when we arrived, the paramedics were loading a 17 year old girl into the back of the ambulance and the fire department was checking for any uh, fluid leaking from the, the cars. Um, the grandmother, who was a 17-year-old girl who was driving the car, uh, she was pretty distraught, thinking she was the reason that her granddaughter was heading to the hospital. But Officer Fife quietly counseled her and assured her that her daughter would be fine, and she was fine. 
Uh, we were on scene for that about two hours, and um, Officer Fyth explained to me this is because whenever somebody has to go to the hospital, they always have to have more thorough paperwork, and it takes much longer. And at this point, I'm going to show you all the pictures um, really quick, since you've probably been looking at them wondering what they were. Uh, Trump and Whites, too. You can see them. Uh, so um, there's a really cool software that Denver Police use. I don't know if any other agencies use it. This is uh, at the scene of the accident. I'll zoom up here. This is the software that they use. You can't really see it too well. But what they do here is they can reconstruct the accident scene and uh, add it in with their paperwork. So they can add in the streets, the cars, the directions they were going, um, the signs, how many lanes were on that street. And uh, there's the car, the white Chrysler there that was hit. Kind of what happened was, so this is on 47th Avenue, um, not far from Peoria. So what happened was there's two lanes heading westbound, two lanes heading eastbound on 47th Avenue. This white Chrysler here was heading westbound, um, and then the car that they crashed into was turning left onto the street we are on now. Uh, one of these cars stopped, let this car make their left-hand turn, and as this car was making their left-hand turn, this white Chrysler drove and they collided. Uh, the people in the other car were the ones who were sighted. They were not injured at all. Um, so yeah, this was about an hour into the... Um, crash investigation. Other picture, this is just the picture of that hold I was talking about. Uh, see, that's actually Officer Fife right there. Uh, this was uh, at a Rod Robin up in Northfield. Uh, we got, there was a call of a silent alarm that went off. So we went, that was the first call of the day, actually. We went up there, lights and sirens. So that was pretty fun. <laughs> um, Officer Fife said that 90% of the time, uh, these type of panic buttons are false alarms. They always got to be ready for that 10%. So that, that was him up there. He told me that they like to kind of um, place their cars around in like kind of in strategic areas. So there aren't any suspects inside. Um, they won't see the police cars right away and take hostages. So that was him. He was hiding behind this concrete flower pot here as for protection. Um, but shortly after this picture was taken, the manager came out and apologized and said that a new employee had accidentally pushed the button, not knowing what it was. So <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this was just the inside of the Ford Explorer, Denver police car. Um, and this is the first part I did. I only got one picture of this one. This was with, with the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. I'll get to this later on. Uh, this was just a traffic stop. This person had a um, Ford Focus SP, and they decided to try going 0 to 60 right behind, the, right behind us, not knowing we were there. <laughs> so uh, they got pulled over, but they only got a warning, though. So that wasn't too bad. And then... Um, this is a map really quick at District 5, so you know what I'm talking about. On, during my Rylon, we spent a lot of time down here in Stapleton, um, but that one accident I was t we were just talking about actually happened right here where this blue dot is, because that's where the District 5 substation is, and just happened right across the street from it. So there's all the pictures. They're going to keep going, now you kind of have an idea of um, what they are and everything. All right, anyway, let's see where I am here. All right, so during those two hours, Officer Fife, Oh, <laughs> turn on the lights. <laughs> there we go. All right. Um, during those two hours, Officer Fire was telling me that compassion is something that he has to use a lot, especially on difficult calls or to calm someone down, as in the case with this accident. Integrity is something that, as a in law enforcement, you have to have. Um, unfortunately, you, some officers don't have integrity, and you can tell pretty obviously who those ones are. Proverbs 11.3 says, The integrity of the upright guides them, but the crookedness of the treacherous destroys them. I read a great book called Take Up the Shield. It was written by a retired chaplain of the L.A. County Sheriff's Office. In his story, he goes through all the armor of God, and he compares each armor to a piece of police equipment and a story from his own career. Uh, when he got to the Belt of Truth, he gave this cool story about when he was back as a patrol officer. Him and his partner were patrolling when they saw a suspicious-looking old beat-up truck. They pulled it over, and as they approached the vehicle, they saw it had brand, two brand new bucket seats and a brand new expensive bag of tools. The uh, deputy and his partner asked them where they got the tools, and they said they had just bought them, but they had lost the receipt. Uh, with probable cause, he and his partner arrested the two suspects. An hour and a half later, after booking them and filling out the paperwork, him and his partner were walking to the evidence room with the, bu the two bucket seats and a bag of tools when a slip of paper fell out. It was the receipt. <laughs> At this point, they could have easily just thrown the receipt away and act like nothing happened. But instead, he, him and his uh, partner showed integrity and went to the sergeant and showed him the receipt and went started undoing all the paperwork he had, they had just done. 
He said it was really a um, great feeling that him and his partner had going back and giving that receipt to the sergeant because they, they knew that in their hearts they had done the right thing and showed in true integrity. For my first ride on, I went with the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office South Precinct on a Sunday afternoon from about 3 to 8. Um, the first call we had and all the calls we had this night um, were about 10, 15 minute radius of our school. Uh, the first call we had was a neighbor dispute where this lady was saying that her neighbor was verbally abusing her. So we booked it over there. Now at this point, I'm going to give you some piece of advice. Don't buy a used police car. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, they, they, uh, both times uh, they had uh, Ford Explorers with the Denver Police and the Sheriff's Office and they pushed them hard. Uh, when they're going to calls, they have to drive fast and furious but safe. Um, and they really push them to max. So if you want to know more about this, you can ask me afterwards. Um, but yeah, this piece of advice for that. All right, so anyway, um, as we pulled up to the scene, the deputy I was with said, ugh, not her again. They had been to this house 22 times already this, that, this year, and this was October of 2017, so I don't know if they've been there more. I assume they have, knowing the lady. Uh, we were there for well over an hour, trying to talk any sense to this lady. But she said, and she kept saying that her religion was horticulture, and she would not budge. She had over 120 trash bags scattered around her yard, and her yard was atrocious. Um, all the neighbors didn't like her. Her yard was completely disgusting, gross. Um, so while we were there for over an hour, we were trying to talk to her, trying to get her to build a fence, um, you know, pick up her trash bags. Um, they had already been at her 22 times before. And the deputy told her this time that this is our last time we're coming out here. And next time, if we get a call, we're going to come here. We're going to see if it's good. We're going to leave because we can't see spending uh, over an hour here just dealing with you. Um, she wouldn't budge. She was her way or the highway. And uh, it was pretty evident by that. We went across the street, talked to the neighbor who the complaint was against. Um, he was an older man. He said, that, yeah, he did yell at her from the sidewalk. So there's nothing that the deputies could do about it. Um, they gave him some options, going to civil court, um, trying to call the county and try to get something done. Um, at this point, I don't know if it's, anything's been changed. I haven't been over there yet. <laughs> um, so as we were walking over to the neighbor's house, I started to say something about the woman and the deputy told me to keep all my comments quiet until we get back to the patrol car. Uh, when we got there, he explained to me that in today's world, officers are one word away from being sued and they always have to be showing the highest level of integrity. Um, no matter what they're doing, and they've got to show the professional attitude of law enforcement. Especially in today's world, one bad officer can be picked of the majority of good officers working hard to keep your community safe. Another great example uh, was back when I was with our Denver Police Rile Uh We got a call in the Stapleton neighborhood to go to this house of a 17-year-old boy from East High School. The background of the call is that this boy and his two of his friends went to, during lunch from East High, went to Firehouse Subs. While they, while they were there, one of his buddies side pump, black mask, and walked to the bank next door. He walked in, gave a teller a note saying he had a bomb in his backpack, and he got away with $4,000 cash. This was during lunch break. <laughs> so, uh, but he was obviously not a good thief because in a couple of hours, the FBI already identified him, and they already picked him up. So we went to the possible getaway driver's house. That was there in Stapleton. Um, so when we got there, Officer Fife and I covered the back door, and the other officers went up front. This was a 17-year-old junior from East High School, and he was questioned, but his friend who robbed the bank was going to jail. Afterwards, um, Officer Fries was telling me how integrity is um, something that not even police officers should have, but everybody in general should have. Um, empathy is something that I learned all police officers should have, but not too much of it. Now, while they're very both alike, compassion is the ability to feel for another human, while empathy is the ability to not only understand another person's feelings, but also to become one with that person's distress. To put yourself in their shoes and imagine what they're going through in that situation. So in law enforcement, you have to have some type of empathy, but you can't always be running on empathy, otherwise you'll get drained up pretty quick. I learned this from Zeb. Uh, I interviewed Zeb in, back in the fall. He's a crimes against children's detective for the Westminster Police Department. So he was telling me how in his field of work, empathy is something that he can use a lot to help understand uh, what the kids are going through and help them get the justice that they deserve. Um, he was also telling me that empathy is something that um, can't be used all the time, otherwise you're gonna, get, you're gonna get worn out pretty fast and um, you have a job to do. You can't let your emotions get away of that job and you have to keep going. Um, 
So that's kind of what I learned from Zeb. Um, then a story of this is during our ride along with the sheriff's office um, later that evening, we had a call of a possible family dispute. So we arrived, another unit arrived. Uh, we went up to the house, and the woman was outside on the phone with 911. We went inside, one deputy went to talk to their husband, and the other deputy and I went to the other room and talked with her. This lady was very disoriented. She couldn't give us her name or even her date of birth. Uh, after talking to the other deputy, we had learned from her husband that she just had a brain aneurysm and she wasn't taking her meds. She thought her husband was leaving her for another woman, even though he was just packing up for work like he does every Sunday night. Uh, at this point, the deputy gave her husband a phone number for mental health resources in Jefferson County. Afterwards, the, on uh, leaving that call, the deputy said that mental health is a big thing that law enforcement deals with. And having empathy is something you have to have when dealing with people with mental health. Understanding what they're going through, but at the same time, being able to do your job effectively is key. Let's see here. All right. So conclusion. Um, this was a great year for me of um, discovering uh, what I want to do with my life, and it really made me want to go in this field even more. Uh, I learned that being a police officer can be tough. It's not an easy job. They have its perks, they have its downfalls, um, but overall it's a fun, fast-paced, exciting job. Um, both officers who I interviewed said that you, what, what you can't do is put your job, um, you can't put your life in your career. If you put your life in this career, you're going to get worn out pretty fast. They said, have God be the leader of your life, not your job. Uh, when I was riding along with my ride along with the Denver police officer, he said it makes their day when somebody says thank you to them. So next time you see a police officer outside, just say thanks. They work hard to keep your community safe and they, they deserve the respect. I learned a lot about this uh, field and already kind of wanting to go into this field a lot um, already. I kind of had some idea what it was like, but after this year of Capstow and all the work that I've done, I realized how um, exciting and how much fun that this uh, field will be. Thank you.